Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. We are excited to bring you this new series of us taking older YouTube videos, cutting them down to more manageable pieces where the idea is we can take highlights of testing methods and procedures that can be applied to all cars across the board. And of course, we'll bring you the fix too. Enjoy this video. 2001 Ford F-150 with a 5.4 liter engine. Customer complaint is a misfire. So what we want to do, of course, first is uh, we're going to check for trouble codes and we're going to look for memory codes. And this is what we get when we're in the field. We get these vehicles that somebody's been here and cleared the trouble code. So we have a P1000 code. That's what that means. And so uh, as far as cylinder misfire goes and helping me identify what cylinder's misfiring, I'm already losing. Okay. So next thing I want to do is uh, show you where you can get misfire counters on Fords. And uh, th this having a P1000 code, it's really not gonna be possible. The data's probably gone. And what we wanna pick is mode six, onboard monitored systems, mode six. From there, this being a Ford test ID 53, this is where you would find your misfire data on a Ford. The problem is when you clear the trouble codes, you've also wiped out your component parameter information. So this isn't gonna be helping me either. So we're gonna get out of here and I'm gonna show you how to do a scope test on these coils from the fuse box. So what I've done is I've uh, removed the fuse from the fuse box for all the coils. It's a 30 amp fuse in the bottom right corner of the fuse box, pretty typical of most of the Ford trucks. Uh, I've installed a uh, tester. Uh, this is basically a fuse that's modified. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to read the amperage of the coils from the fuse box. So I have a jumper wire installed, fuse jumper of course, and I have my amp clamp connected. And what we're gonna look at is the coil current firing ramps from the fuse box. And I have a frozen picture of it already, but I'll show you the setup. What you wanna do, knowing what kind of amp probe you're using, that this is a 20 amp setting, I'm using 100 millivolts as one amp. So looking at channel one as my amperage and channel two is going to be what I'm gonna be synchronizing it with because I need to know what coil is what on the screen. So channel two is gonna be a primary coil voltage waveform on one particular coil. I'm gonna go under the hood and show you where I'm connected for that one. All right, what we're looking at is the uh, right side of the engine. This is cylinders one, two, three, and four on the right side. Important information to know. I'm on the first coil, which is right here and I've put a T-pin on the coil negative control wire for coil number one. You don't need to use cylinder one, you can use any cylinder you want to, you just need to know what cylinder you're going to. In our case, cylinder number one, that's where I'm connected. We're looking at our, our two channels, channel one being the current waveform for all of the coils, and channel two being the coil number one primary voltage waveform. And what I wanna do is I wanna pick a time base that's, that's pretty small right now. I wanna see some detail. It's important to know that that is cylinder number one that we're looking at right there. So I'm gonna freeze the picture, and from that point, I'm gonna hit the zoom button over here, and what this is gonna do, show me all that collected data. What we wanna do from this point is we want to look at some detail here. First thing I wanna show you is that every green trace that you see down here is the number one cylinder that's firing. That's my uh, second channel, that's my number one cylinder voltage waveform. So that's number one, that's number one, that's number one, and there should be eight cylinders in between, there is. And what we wanna do is look at some detail now. And we'll zoom in and we'll take a look at the one we don't like. And this is my guy I don't like. This guy right there, I don't like him. Zoom in on that, and what you're looking at is a coil with no turn-on oscillations. You see no activity in here, see no activity here or here. This is a shorted secondary winding. Classic view, shorted secondary winding. This is a unique system Ford uses. The reason you have tri a triple pulse here is this is a multi-strike ignition system. Idle and low speeds, you're gonna have multiple 
uh, discharges of that coil at top dead center. So don't worry too much about that for what I'm doing right now. I want to show you what a good one should look like. That is not a good one. Let me show you a good one and you'll see the difference in what I'm talking about. You see the nice ramp effect we have here? Do you see some activity here, some oscillations on each of these turn-ons? That's what we want to see. Those are good ones. I'll let you see a couple of them here. That's a good one, good one. That's good, that's okay. There's our bad one again. Now we gotta figure out which one that is. So again, this is the importance of the second channel underneath, so I'm gonna zoom back out. Keep in mind, that this is cylinder number one, the green trace, that's cylinder number number one right there. Cylinder number one right there. That's cylinder number one right there. So we need the firing order now. And the firing order says 137, 26, 548. Okay? 137, 26, 548. Number five is the guy we don't like. That's my guy right there. I don't like him. Zoom back in on that to show it to you. There's your bad coil. Got a number five cylinder, shorted secondary winding condition. This could also be a shorted plug. A shorted plug would do the same thing, but the fact is we've identified the cylinder misfire from the fuse box using a scope and a low amp probe. For further info on coil current ramping, uh, check out my book, it's on my website, and uh, this would be in, I believe it's section 21 or 22, which is no start, no spark diagnosis. I go through a lot more of this coil current ramping. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the highlights of this case study. If you have any questions about the testing methods being shown, or you'd like to learn more about my process, click on the link in the description for the full length video. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And more importantly, make sure you click on that bell icon to get notifications of all new uploads.